So how much lower can our sales numbers get? Spoiler alert, not much. Welcome, welcome to the Rick Helps Real Estate Show. We try to make sense of this crazy Arizona real estate market and you will see numbers that you will remember and you'll be able to spit them out when you're at that Christmas party. You'll be a hit. Either that or everybody's going to go to the other side of the room and avoid you. So how much slower can sales numbers get? They're pretty low and I'm going to show you a couple examples both nationally and here locally. They're pretty dismal. Now, that can be good news, that can be bad news, depends on your situation. So we're going to go through and take a look at what's going on. Obviously, the elephant in the room is interest rates. And you can see that uh, they're sitting at about 6.2 right now, I, I believe 6.28. Uh, they went up a little bit yesterday, um, not much, but you can see that they are running in the sixes. As long as interest rates are in the sixes right now, in resale homes, we're not seeing a lot of movement because um, of affordability. However, there's a lot of rate buy downs going on, especially in new builds, com new build communities where they have enough cash to work with it, where they can buy down your rate for the entire 30 year term. There's some sweet deals out there. 4.9 for 30 years, even lower if you put 20% down. So if you're hankering to get a house that might be where I'd suggest you kind of start looking but if we look nationally here and I'm going to move my I don't want to move that I want to move me there we go and then we'll get back to a better look here this is existing home sales nationally see how it just went straight down here this is when interest rates went up and it shocked everybody we went from three to six boom like that but I'm out 30 30 percent of contracts are canceled everybody's out Sales plummeted, but look, existing home inventory. How come it's not going up? It went up a little bit. We went from, we were tracking at about 4,800 homes for a while and then about 8,000. And then uh, we went up to as high as 20,000 active homes. Now we're back down to 7,900 this week. How come it's not going up? Because over here, when things went to hell in the handbasket in 2008, we had 58,000 homes on the market and there were no sales. And we're almost at the floor here nationally when it comes to sales. You can see that it was at its worst in 2010 because nobody could buy because everybody handed their homes back to the bank. Now they couldn't qualify for a loan. Credit was practically frozen. So there was nothing happening down here. We're in a good credit environment right now. You can get a loan. It's, uh, it's not, you, you have to do more than just fog up a mirror, but you can get, you can get financing. You know, you hear rumors that it's tighter. It really isn't. It's the, the qualifications are tighter than they ever were back in 2007. So that's, what's keeping our financial market solid. So is there a floor in the uh, sales number? I kind of think there is, and I want to show you here on my chart that I track, and I do the seven day moving average for just our market. Bear with me while I pull this up. It should come up a lot easier than it is. For some reason, it's fighting me, but here I am. Um, we're looking at this red line here is a trend showing the number of homes under contract over a seven day period. It has been continuously going down for quite some time. Each little blip here is, is a day. So it's been going down, down, down. These huge dips here are holidays. This is Thanksgiving right here. The blue line is the number of new listings that are coming on, not active, but how many homes got put on the market in the past seven days. And that is declining as well. And we should expect this to go up in January, and I'll touch on that in just a moment. But the thing I want to point out again is, as I pointed out in the last one, where you had all this inventory and no sales, you can see it here. See all the new listings that came on here in the middle? And then see how sales tanked? That's when prices started falling, and falling quickly. Well, now that gap up here it was like 1,700 homes. We had 1,700 more new listings coming on than we're going under contract. Now we're down to 400. That does not apply any downward pricing pressure. It applies some, but not much. 
And so that's going to have to change. If you want prices to come down further or if we expect to see them come down further, it has nothing to do with our sales number because there's not a lot of wiggle room for that to get any lower than it is. But it has a lot to do with how many homes are going to come on board. Now, I've seen comments and I've had questions of people saying, you know, should I take my house off now and then wait and put it back on in January? Um, and a lot of conversations out there that tell us that there are people that are talking about listing in January and February. And uh, I did a survey on this channel about people that own Airbnbs. Three choices in the survey. Are you going to keep it, sell it, or turning it into a long-term rental? 37% of the respondents said they plan on selling their Airbnb next year. But you can bet they're not going to sell them until after the Super Bowl. How much of that's going to come on? I don't know. There's a lot of them out there. And if 37% of them say that they're going to put them on the market, that's a big number, especially in a town like Sedona that has over 1,000 Airbnbs. And their Airbnb business right now is, is kind, of, kind of hurting. So then we've got Open Door. Open Door still has almost 1,100 homes. I think they only sold 100 homes this month. Not going too good for them. They pulled off 180 of them temporarily to fix them back up paint them better, put them back on the market. We'll see what happens there. That's a pretty expensive little experiment for them. So um, they run about 11% of our listings between 400 and 600,000. So they are having an impact. But when you scroll through and look, where they're really having an impact is the townhomes they bought. They bought a boatload of these things. And uh, they went on a townhome buying spree. So there's going to be a little fire sale going on with those, but uh, they haven't been, there hasn't been a lot of success in trying to come in and lowball them yet because they're, they're waiting. So all eyes are on January. So we're going to continue to see if inventory starts coming up. Now, the other number that we like to look at here on this channel is listings above, closings above list price. Back in here, back in June of 2021, 60% of the homes that were listed were getting more than their asking price. And that's why you saw those television commercials. Uh, I got more than my asking price. Well, newsflash, over half of you did. <laughs> and it, it didn't take any kind of fancy marketing plan or we do this and I have the buyers. It had nothing to do with that. It's just there, there were a lot of people wanting to buy homes because money was free and there weren't a lot of choices. So the only way we were going to get that house was to bid it up and bid it up they did and now we're sitting here with only 12 percent of homes going over list price and the price instead of being fifteen twenty thousand dollars is like five thousand bucks now buried inside of that is you may be getting over your list price but you're being asked to contribute towards a rate buy down or closing cost assistance so that uh some people are saying okay i'll offer you five thousand more than your asking price if you'll give me $10,000 in a rate buy down. That's good math for both the buyer and the seller. So we'll watch and see how much of that goes on. In January, I would expect that we're going to have to see a huge spike in inventory uh, in order for prices to come down much further. A couple of things that we do know. We do know that when you get over 800 to 1,000 homes gap between new listings and contracts, then prices come down. We also know, though, that when interest rates get down to the mid fives, that sales jump up. It did in July. Showed up as closings in August, but for just a short blip there, we went from six down to 5.5, and buyers ran in. And so will we see that again if we get down to 5.5? Well, first we have to get to 5.5, and we'll see what happens. So uh, we, have, we have more inventory now we have less inventory now than we did in July. So, um, you know, I don't know what to expect. I just know that by the second week of January, if we start seeing listings come on at a very aggressive rate, then we need to sound the alarms and say, you better start pricing aggressively because if you don't, it's going to sit there. Now, big question. Should I list at the first part of the year? Well, it boils down to list, folks. When do you want to list? when inventory is down here low or do you want to list when inventory is up here we're way down here sales are slow i get it you're not getting many showings but if you wait for inventory to go up in february 
and this sales number does not follow it, you're going to have a hard time selling your home. So if you are planning on selling, I'd hit the ground with your feet moving in January and get ready, uh, not for a lot of showings, but for the people that are out there, they're going to be serious. So that would be my advice if you're talking about listing your home. Don't wait. Spring, you know, there's going to be more listings in spring. There always is here in March and April. So um, that means more competition. If rates don't make a move down, we're not going to have an increase in contracts, which right now are averaging about 2,100 every seven days. Not a big number. In fact, it's a historic low. So those are the numbers for Arizona and nationally. Everybody take on the day. Have a great week. Have a very Merry Christmas.